Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about phase. So one of the most common ways that we have phase issues in recording in the audio world is when we have two microphones on the same sound source. So I've just imported this sample here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this track to emulate having two different microphones on the same sound source. So if you imagine these tracks as recordings of real instruments, then you can imagine that these are two different microphones here. So this will be maybe this is the close microphone. And then imagine this is the far microphone. So what happens is that if we have a microphone up close on a sound source, and then we also have a far mic, so for example, overhead mics or a room microphone, or if we're talking about film, this might be the lav mic, this might be the boom mic. But basically, if we have two microphones on the same sound source, which happens often, it happens a lot with drums, it happens a lot in film, it happens pretty often. But anyway, what happens is because of the speed of sound, the sound coming from the sound source is going to hit this close microphone first. And so sound is relatively slow, I mean, at least compared to like the speed of light and stuff. So what'll then happen is this might be slightly off. And that's because the sound will take a little bit of time to travel through the room. And of course, the farther this far mic is from the close mic, then the more this is gonna be delayed. But basically the sound takes a little bit of time to travel through the room and then it's gonna hit this microphone second. So basically it can be just a tiny bit off, it can be way off, it depends on what your setup is really. But what happens is if we have these way off, then we're gonna have to talk about phasing issues. So phase only comes into play when there are two waveforms, right? You can't talk about phase if you just have one waveform. But basically, if you look at this waveform, it's going up overall while this one's going down. So that looks like it's almost completely out of phase. And so what happens is when these interact, when these get summed together in our computer, in our DAW, Pro Tools, whatever it is, when they get summed together, they might cancel each other out. So if you imagine this in something like a perfect system, something like, for example, if we were to use a sine wave generator to emulate this, if you had it so that the lowest point on this waveform is matching up with the highest point on this waveform, and then when they hit zero it would also match up, then what that would mean is that these sine waves are 180 degrees out of phase. So when this one goes down, this one goes up, and vice versa. And you know that only works when these sine waves are the same exact frequency. So if we think about it with a sine wave and how in order to line up like this, they have to be the same frequency, or in other words, they have to be identical waveforms in order to cancel each other out completely, then we can think about how, for example, we'll get phase issues when we have two microphones on the same sound source. And so usually it happens when it's the same sound source because then what comes into the two microphones is pretty close to identical in terms of what the waveform looks like. It's just offset slightly. So that's how we get phase issues when we're recording. So let's look at this zoomed out a bit. So you might have, for example, recorded drums and you might have a few different microphones on the drums and you might see something like this where it looks like they're pretty lined up, but you might be getting phase issues. So what you always wanna do is you wanna zoom in and see if they're lining up. And if they're not, it's super easy. You just drag them over or nudge them over and get them to line up. And that's how you fix phase issues. And so what I'll do a lot of times is I'll click here with the selector tool and then I'll hold shift and I'll click down here and I'll zoom in and that line, that blinking line really helps me line it up. So this one I would move over slightly, just a little more. And that's how you do it. So it's really easy to fix phasing issues. That's basically how I do it, is I just will manually slide over all the tracks except for one to match that one, right? Another thing you can do to check for phase issues is, let me get rid of the comments here. You can add a plugin and a lot of plugins, I'm gonna go with the one that comes with Pro Tools for you guys, just cause I know everyone doesn't have the same plugins as me. Um, a lot of the plugins here will have a phase button. So this little no symbol, that's actually a phase button. And what this does is when I click this in here, it's active. And what that does is it flips the waveform 180 degrees. So one way you can do it is you can listen to your audio and you can hit this back and forth. And if it sounds better with the phase flipped, then it's probably closer to being 180 degrees out of phase than, than it is to being in phase. So that's something you can do. I'm just gonna play this for a second so you can hear it and you can compare. So I'm just gonna solo this here so we can hear just this one. Woo, sound library loops. Anyway, so basically if I unsolo this, they're in phase right now, because I believe I put this one all the way to the front. Yeah, so these are in phase, so it's just gonna sound louder right now. But if I then flip the phase on this one using this phase button, 
they completely cancel each other out. And so that's because this button flips it 180 degrees, right? So whenever this goes all the way down, you're not gonna see it on the waveform, but I kinda wanted to show you visually here. Whenever this one goes all the way down, it's now going all the way up. And so when these are summed together, you get a negative value for amplitude summed with the opposite positive value for amplitude. And when you add, for example, negative three with positive three, you get zero. So you just get zero all the way across on our waveform. And so that's why, since these are completely identical, it's just a sample from a sound library duplicated. So they're completely identical. So when I flip this 180, I don't hear anything. Pretty cool, right? So let's take that off. And now let's move this over slightly so we can hear what that sounds like. And so what you'll notice, um, you might've noticed already, but what you'll notice is that when we shift these so that they're not quite in phase and they're not quite 180 degrees out of phase, we lose a lot of frequencies. So that's one of the things you can listen for is you listen for the loss of frequency and that's how you can tell if you're out of phase. So for example, these are out of phase now. So both of those sound wrong to me, right? So they both are missing frequencies and they're both missing frequencies in different ways. So what I would then do is I would listen to this by itself, see how that sounds, and I would then zoom in and check out how they look in terms of phase. And I would just visually then line them back up like I showed you guys. And to be honest, a lot of the time, I don't use this phase button on a plugin or anything like that. I'll just zoom in and get it done right to begin with. And that's just the way I am. You know, I'd rather do the tedious thing and not have to worry about it after that. But a lot of times I will just go straight to zooming in, looking at the waveforms and lining them up. And just keep in mind, like this is a sample. So if you actually had uh, two microphones on the same sound source, then these might look slightly different. So they might not always line up perfectly and you kind of just do your best to make them look like they're lined up to the best of your ability. And that should get you the best sound, you know, the most full sound out of those microphones. So yeah, that's the basic concepts behind phase and how to fix it and what it sounds like. I hope you guys found this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And you know, if you like this video, please check out my other videos. That's one of the biggest things that you can do to help me out here on YouTube right now is going to another one of my videos and not letting the algorithm just take you away from my channel. So if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please check out my other videos and let me know what you think of those. And you know, as usual, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you wanna support my channel more directly, I do have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash noise. And my patrons do get access to additional content. So please feel free to check that out. I'll be coming out with new videos every Wednesday and thanks for watching. Okay. Sorry, they're still doing this flipping construction outside, so there's probably some background noise in that, and I'm sorry. <laughs>